Okay, I guess I'm ready. Article 3 to 12. 3. Um, we generally have a block here that's voted on as a group. Um, so if someone wants, if we have a motion to that effect, we'll hear that and then I'll explain it. Mr. Moderator, I'd love to make that motion. I, I move that the town vote to approve articles 3 through 12 as written in the town warrant, except for the phrases or take any action relative there to be omitted. Okay. So the motion. I'm I'm, can't put this. The motion is made to approve articles 3 through 12. So if anybody wants to pull one of those out and discuss it individually, we can do that. Otherwise, we're going to vote on Articles 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Anybody want to take one out? No? Nope? Okay. All those in favor of approving those articles, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no? It's a done deal. Okay, Article 13. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, transfer or borrow the sum of $1 to plow private roads or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes, sir. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $1 from free cash to plow private roads. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Any discussion on that one? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Okay. We're on article 57. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Article 14. Oh, boy. To see if the town will vote to strike the preamble of the Tantasco Regional District reading or take any action as written in the book here or take any action relative thereto. We'll cut it out a little bit. Okay. Who's got this one? I do. Mr. Moderator? Okay. Yes. I move that the town vote to approve Article 14 as written in the town warrant, except that the phrase or take any action relative thereto be admitted. Okay. okay. All right. Article 14. Any comments, questions, discussion on this one? What is it? Can somebody explain it? Oh, good. We have. Thank you, Ms. Boyd. Um, excuse me, Deb Boy, the Associate Superintendent. The next three articles are actually the work of a subcommittee over the last three years at the Regional School District. There's been a subcommittee consisting of one member from each of the five towns. Regional School District School document is 64 years old. Um, back in 52, when we were the second region formed in the state, the document back then contains a lot of language that is no longer legal, doesn't contain language that should it should contain from a legal perspective, has a number of references about the formation of, an, of a region when we've actually been functioning. Um, so these articles are the work of the subcommittee to do what they consider just housekeeping. None of them changes the operations or what we've been doing for the past, at least in my tenure, for 16 years. They are just to correct legal language, remove things that are no longer relevant, and um, just move forward from a housekeeping perspective. Anybody else want to question her before she goes too far? I just have one question from someone who's on the committee when we started this. At one point they were discussing relooking, examining apportionment. I assume they never resolved that issue. <coughs> that is specifically not being dealt with in this. Correct. Thank you. I, I just want to clarify <coughs> the membership. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Not here. Mr. Monterey. All right. <clears throat> I'd like to amend. Go ahead. Yeah, come on up, Pat. I'd like to amend the motion to include article number 14, 15, and 16 all together. Second. <laughs> go ahead a little bit, and then we'll see where it's going to work. Well, I mean, if if they're all doing the same thing and they're changing the contract, I, I, we can can we vote on them as a group? Okay. 
Don't tell us the answer. Well, okay. Uh, the question, her question is, or her comment is, Articles 14, 15, and 16 all have to do with the regional school agreement. Can we vote them all at once? Well, if you want to, you can. But if anybody wants to talk about anything in particular that's separate, then then we can. So does anybody want to pull anything out? It'll be either 14, 15, or 16. Okay, Pat, go ahead, make your motion one more time. Let's get a second and we'll proceed with it. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I make a motion that we um, include um, article number 14, 15, and 16 all together in one vote. Second. Second. Okay. Good enough? Yep. Okay. Any, any other comments or questions or discussion on it? Okay. All those in favor of approving articles 14, 15, and 16, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay. Good. We got that done. Okay. I thought we did. I asked to modify the motion. So she amended the motion. Yes. So the vote should have been on the amendment. Okay. All right. So we approved her amendment. They're all under one. Um, we'll, we'll just do it again to make sure. Um, all those in favor of approving the three articles relative to the regional school agreement, please say aye. Aye. And all those opposed, no. Okay. Okay, Article 17 um, actually has to do with electronic voting equipment for the town meeting. Uh, so I have some questions um, to make on it, so I'm going to step down. Hopefully I'll be back up in, in a short time. Mr. Town Clerk is going to take over. And maybe I'll be back. <laughs> Okay, so uh, go ahead and read the article. Who's going to make the motion for the oh, article? Read the whole thing. All right, I'm, I'm making it. Okay, Mr. Moderator, I move to the town vote to transfer the sum of five thousand dollars for free cash to purchase electronic voting equipment. Second. Okay. Any discussion? <coughs> <laughs> well, why don't we get the proponents to explain it first before I ask any questions? Okay, would anybody like to discuss this article? Go ahead. Okay, this is from the advisory board. Um, what this does is, as you know, a lot of you that were here on the special um, special meeting, Article 7, you people were counting, are you up, you're down, you missed me last time, um, the accuracy wasn't there. So this is one reason we want to do this, is accuracy. Number two, it's going to streamline the voting in here. Number three, you won't have to have counters in here. And four, you're not going to have people up and down and, and so on and so forth. Also, people, some of us don't want to know how other people are voting or we don't want them to know how you're voting. So when by this here, that will uh, put all this into place. Um, what it does is the moderator will have a monitor at his podium, and everyone will receive a clicker. You'll be checked in as you come in to check in. They will give you a clicker. Um, the moderator will tell you to vote yes or no, and then he will tell you to vote, and then he will tell you the vote is going to stop. And at that time, you have to have your vote in, and then he will check the screen, and you can see the nays and the yays. And it's, it'll be all right there in front of him. And that's pretty much, um, that pretty much sums it up pretty good. 
So if you have any questions, and this includes 190 clickers. Okay, Mr. Pagno. Well, thank you. Uh, first question. Um, what, what, how are you going to change the bylaw to reflect, reflect what you're proposing? Okay, I can't answer that right at this time. <clears throat> do you need to change the bylaw to do this? Um, maybe the moderator can answer that for me. <clears throat> Not to my knowledge. <laughs> okay, then that's unfortunate Mr. because Martyr. I would say that we need to look at the town bylaws and see what is allowed for voting. I learned about this proposal last Friday. I thought this proposal had to do, when I first saw the warrant, with voting at the town elections. Um, so Mr. Holcraft told me last Friday that um, it had to do with the town meeting. Um, and then he delivered to me today some handouts that he, I guess, hasn't given out. But I've seen some other material. So the first question that pops into my mind is to have somebody look at the town bylaws and see what's allowed and what isn't allowed. And you're going to have to make some changes to do that. Um, I would argue strenuously that we still maintain voice votes. If you're going to change it so everything is um, by the clicker, um, then I would strongly oppose that. So that's number one. Uh, second question. Um, there are two towns that I know of that have uh, open town meetings, which this is, that have um, electronic voting. Uh, East Ham with 4,000 voters and 1,300 1,400 clickers, um, Westboro with 11,000 voters and a smaller number of, of devices. In both cases, um, they rent um, that. And they do that with the idea that if they're um, coming up with a town meeting that is unusually large, um, they have access to them. Um, that's just a, a point. My next question, though, is a little bit more important, at least from a moderator's point of view. Um, who's going to be responsible for setting up the software that goes with this, obtaining the hardware, and um, making sure that it works correctly? That would be a company representative. I've spoke to them, and they would help us out with that. And the, everything, the software is going to be included in it, and we can also do PowerPoint. That will also be in, in already into the package with this. So you get two things so you can do. If you want to do PowerPoint, you can do that, or you can just strictly do the votes. So Mr. Moderator, my, my question would be, is someone from whatever firm... Um, the town decides to go with um, coming to every meeting. Are you asking me that question directly? I'm asking the moderator, and then hopefully you can get me an answer. Mr. Holcraft, would you like to answer that question? No, no, no someone's not going to come every time. It's just going to be the first time he'll get us get us up and running. He will. The, the company's not going to come down here every meeting. Someone will have to be set it up and for each meeting, just like they do the microphones. We'll do the same with this. And I'm willing to volunteer my time if that if we can do that. Okay. All right. Um, the next question um, has has to do with um, signing in and signing out the devices. Um, that's somewhat of an issue. But my other question has to do with the law. Who is going to be responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of this? Well, that's going to have to be determined. It's just like anything else in our town. The microphones, the cameras, same thing. Is it Someone will have to be designated. Okay. And, Mr. Moderator, my question will be, who, 
Who is going to designate that person? I suspect it might be the moderator. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might be the moderator who designates that person, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't think so. Um, and number two, um, it won't be the moderator. Um, <laughs> It I'm won't be this moderator. Let's, let's put it that way. <laughs> so that's I want to make that clear. Well, I think that's uh, because important. The, because the amount of the amount of conversation we have had about the speaker system and how it has operated or hasn't operated over the years, the last thing that, quite frankly, I want to take on is a system that is very different um, from anything that we do. And so my next question is to the advisory committee um, in the process of going to look for the company that you're going with um, are you creating a request for a proposal or are you just how are you operating to get this because there are a number of different systems out there um, there's been a long discussion on the Massachusetts moderators website um, about six weeks ago about this very issue. Um, and towns that have a representative town meeting, um, Amherst, um, Brookline, uh, they operate under a di very different system. But towns that have open town meetings um, have some significant issues with how the software gets handled. Mr. Moderator? <clears throat> Who's asking the question? Oh, go ahead. Mr. Mayor, uh, based on uh, our moderator's opinions and the one that's going to have to implement this and his concerns, I would make a motion to pass over this article for further research. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor of passing over this article? Don't they have a right to talk? You have other people at the mic. Who's? Oh, would anybody else care to speak on this issue? I'd vote to pass over the motion first. <laughs> well, I see some hands behind you, so we're going to recognize uh, some people here. Russ Faniff, uh, Howard Street and Planning Board. Um, so there's two questions that I would just like to add to this discussion. One is what is the uh, window that this is going to be uh, up to date? Is it a cloud-based service uh, that's regularly updated? Um, or do we pay for a version and then three years from now we pay again and we get into that cycle? And uh, the only other comment, uh, if, if you could answer that. They said there was, shouldn't be any, any you know, updates like you're saying. It's a pretty, pretty basic uh, system if you're just doing the yay and the nays. Is there I a licensing fee? No, there is not. So it's a $5,000 one-time spend fee for, for the for the equipment for perpetuity. Right. That doesn't seem to make sense to me. Yep. Because you got 190 clickers. That's okay. where the cost is. And that's okay. where part of the cost is. Okay. Uh, and then my other uh, just a comment would be um, I think that uh, that money could be better spent uh, promoting civic engagement. If we look around, we have a, a town that's uh, 3,000 people and if we're talking about getting maybe 190 clickers, um, that's a problem in and of itself. <laughs> Sharon Mahoney, Planning Board. Um, I'd like to state that I think this issue complicates a problem that we in fact don't have. There is a provision, I believe, and I think it has been employed in previous town meetings, that if people want a secret ballot, which is, I assume, the purpose of this motion, there is a provision to vote to have a secret ballot. And granted, it's not digital, it's analog, using little pieces of paper. but. There is a way to do this without investing $5,000. I'd also like to say that um, if a few people aren't comfortable voting openly, um, the town should not be uh, the town should not be made to pay for their insecurity. Thank you. Let me just off. I don't know if I should start with last call. Let me start with the technology. This is probably going to be a Bluetooth system. How many folks here have a cell phone? You probably have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi on it. So it's a very easy system. It's just going to register. You're going to put a monitor up there. And it's just going to record it. Point two. How many of you like spending an extra 30 minutes of this town meeting to have someone go around with clickers? I just soon spend my time, especially on a Friday night, doing something else. Maybe you all like being here. Third. 
Someone just talked about civic engagement. You don't know how many people I've heard come up to me and tell me in this town, they don't come to town meeting for fear of retribution. So one of the other advantages of this is it will promote secret balloting. You don't need to go to take the extra time to cut up paper ballots and have a moderator do the work. Frankly, I think this is long overdue. We live in a high-tech cloud era. Let's move on. Let's get with it. <coughs> okay, so there's a motion on the floor to pass over the article. If there's no more discussion, it sounds to me like Linda said second. All those in favor of passing over this article, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Sounds to me like the guys have it. Welcome back, Mr. Fagno. <laughs> Just point of order. I want to call for a roll call vote. Get the clickers out. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Are you serious? I'm serious. Too late. Well, I'm calling as a point of order for a roll call vote. Too late. The vote is changed. No, it's not. You have to do it before. No, you don't. They do. No, you don't. No, no I need some clarification. On a point of order, as I understand it, you need seven others to agree to that point of order? Does that sound right to you? Yeah, but I need, I need to follow my own microphone. Example. I mean, if I make everybody else come up, I have to do the same. Oh, sure. What was the question? <laughs> the question was, if a res if a citizen offers a point of order on the floor after a vote, isn't it is it true that we need seven others to agree with that point of order after his point of order? Point of order. <clears throat> Uh, yes, and then if you if you look in the bylaws on um, the section about voting, it, it gives a criteria for a voice vote, a standing vote, and a ballot vote. It tells you how to do it in there and what you need to do it. If if the assembly so orders, so all, all we need to do is find find the bylaw and read it, and we'll be all set. You're talking about our town bylaw. Yep. Yep. Uh, go ahead. I also have town council here. What's your question? Okay. Okay, so according to our bylaws, we're going to, uh, at this point of order, we're going to have a roll call vote. All those in favor of passing over this article, please stand up and counters, please count. Okay, so we have 53 in favor of passing over this article. All those opposed. Do you want us to count? Oh, absolutely. Fifty-three 
agree in favor of passing over this article. I'm saying no. nothing. Did I pass? The vote was 53 to 10. 53 in favor of passing over the article and 10 opposed. And now I'm going to turn this back over by the... Okay, um, Article 18, to see, if, to see if the town will vote to transfer a sum of money from the Town Hall Improvements Bathroom account to install a new ADA bathroom on the first floor of the Town Hall and to address other ADA issues in the Town Hall threshold and ADA access. Or take any action Mr. Moderator. Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to move, uh, I, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $50,000 from the Town Hall Improvements Bathroom Account to the Town Hall ADA ba and Bathroom Account to install a new ADA bathroom on the first floor of the Town Hall and to address any other ADA issues in the Town Hall th uh, threshold and ADA access. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Um, discussion? Mr. Moderator? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned about this. Uh, we had talked with the selectmen previously uh, and requested that they present a plan so that people would see what was, was being proposed. Um, I'd like to see a plan before I vote. Mr. Moderator? Yes. There is a plan, I don't believe it to be to scale on the back table. I don't know if anyone grabbed one when they walked in. If like to take a minute or two to grab one. I don't think that's appropriate to hand it out at the meeting. I think it should have done, been done prior. Mr. Moderator? Yeah. Through discussion, um, and this wasn't a one-time discussion, we've been discussing this as a board of selectmen for probably a half a year to a year. Discussion of the Board of Selectmen, we wanted to be extremely transparent in our actions. Uh, we had discussed uh, basically taking over the assessor's office, relocating them, and installing a bathroom. Um, and then we chose to go to a smaller scale. The plan that you have in front of you is the, is the vision that this Board of Selectmen has approved for the renovation of the town hall. It does include an elevator. This is a multi-year plan with grants and applications that we would have to apply for. The first phase that we would like to approach was the $50,000 that got allocated last year. Uh, we did decide to move forward with that plan, heard a lot of feedback that it was not appropriate that the town voted to um, basically renovate the existing bathroom, so that's why we're bringing it forward. Uh, if you notice, there is a bathroom on this drawing at the top section that has two urinals, two toilets and two sinks. That is the bathroom that we are proposing in this motion with other renovations for thresholds and the uh, handicap access door renovation. That is the purpose of this article.
Steve, is is that going to be the fifty thousand is going to put the bathroom in? Mr. Moderator, uh, through my calculations, and we discussed about two months ago, the total for that bathroom would be approximately twelve to thirteen thousand dollars. Mr. Moderator, yes. uh, let me just understand. So uh, the article is proposing a unisex bathroom, and and that's going to go where it says men. Is that correct, Mr. Moderator? Yes. yes not only, uh, Mr. O'Connell, does it incorporate that new bathroom, it keeps the existing bathroom that we currently have. So there would technically be two bathrooms in the town hall. And then in another phase, the bathroom that's labeled women would then be built. Correct. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, questions? I'm not working at all. Mikey Park is talking. I think it was. <coughs> Can you hear me back there? No. Accessibility. We've had this money available to us for accessibility issues for a year. Mr. Moderator? Yes, sir. I have met with the Tantasqua Carpentry Division. Uh, they are coming in next year to do the door and then alter the thresholds, as well as if we approve this to start framing in those two petitions. Uh, just so everybody's clear, the installation of a men's room in what's known as the banquet hall will 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 prompt us to do the entire town hall is that the um, <clears throat> the gist of this mr. moderator the intent of the board of selectmen currently sitting is to renovate the town hall this would be one step towards that goal any idea where the elevator would be it's not on your print here it, it is over by the accountant's office in the tower <clears throat> Um, I just have a question about the layout. Um, it was stated that this would be a unisex bathroom. I've never seen a unisex bathroom with urinals in it. Usually it's all stalls. Um, the second thing is if it's ADA compliant and a woman in a wheelchair wishes to use this bathroom, would she be able to do it with the urinals in there? I mean, <laughs> M Mr. Moderator, the, the, the initial plan would be a lock on that door and a woman would be able to access that handicap accessible toilet in the back. A lock on the door for the entire bathroom? Correct. So it would be off limits unless you ask for the key? I, I wouldn't assume so, just lock from the inside, so... Oh, would, you mean lock on the stall door? On the door to access the bathroom completely. So the bathroom would be... Like our, like our current bathroom. Oh, I see, a lock on the inside of the bathroom door so that the entire space would be locked off. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, other comments? Questions? John Washburn? Wait, 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 wait. Is this better? No. Oh. Um. You turned it off. No? No. No. Now? Yeah. <coughs> you do it, Michael? <laughs> go ahead. Let's see what we got. There. John Washburn, I just want to know what the co total cost of this whole bathroom, both combined, is going to be. Is it fifty thousand for each side, or is it, or is it fifty thousand for the whole thing? Mr. Moderator. Yes, sir. The existing bathroom would not be touched. There's no need to put any money in it because we're bringing a new bathroom on board, which would be ADA accessible. 
You say in the women's room and the men's room is all in one? Is that what you're saying? Unisex. Unisex. <clears throat> Mr. Moderator? Yeah. Uh, I, I think we need to take the word women and men out. This, understand that this is a plan for an overall renovation of the town hall where we see this in the future. Um, this one that's labeled men would be a bathroom. It would be an accessible bathroom for handicap, which would make us in compliance. And then we would have two bathrooms in the building. Uh, next phase could potentially uh, replace the assessor's office. I think that would probably be later in a third phase. But the desire is to start moving with a renovation to the town hall and bring us up to ADA accessibility as well. I do not see how this unisex why do the men's room if you have the old one? Why don't you do the women first? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Moderator? Well, through discussion of this board um, and other members, uh, doing the women's bathroom is, that women's bathroom is currently where the assessors are located, and there were a lot of discussion of where to place the assessor's office. It just it seemed commonsensical to actually build a whole new bathroom and not displace the assessors. Well, maybe so, but as a woman, I do not want to use a bathroom with a couple of urine. <laughs> and I want a room, a decent bath uh, stall to be able to say that it is ADA. And it doesn't make any sense to me that I'm gonna have to stand outside while some man goes in and comes out and then I can go in. <coughs> I think you need to rethink that, and you need to have a, no, that's a meeting so that we can come and discuss this, not just throw it at us tonight. Hi, I'm Bill Simpson. Um, this is a tricky one. Um, it's been a, we've had this money for a year in place. Um, the selectmen have been working on this in various ways and in, in conversations throughout the year. Um, I think they've come to a point where they have a decision and a plan to move forward. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of myself and in my involvement with the Friends of the Brookfield Town Hall, who support the long-term renovation of this building. Um, I would like to encourage the town to vote <coughs> this money into place, the transfer per uh, per the warrant article and if there's a way we can help move this project forward I think this is an opportunity to do that so I encourage people to vote in favor of the motion thank you motion is made what you saying Donald we go, we go made again. to move the question. Move the question they're saying, thank you. It's working. Okay, motion is made to move the question. I hear a second. Okay. All those in favor of ending debate are gonna say aye. All those in opposed to ending debate are gonna say no. All those in favor of ending debate, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The debate is over. Now we're down to the question of transferring the fifty thousand dollars from free cash. All those in favor, please say aye. Well, it's not from free cash. All those opposed, say no. No. It's not from free cash. It's not from free cash. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <coughs> what? It's a transfer. It's a transfer from one account. Oh, oh dear. Okay. All those in favor of transferring the fifty thousand dollars from the town hall improvements bathroom account to the town hall ADA and bathroom account, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. 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 Now we have a vote. All right, it's going to be a long night now. Um, 19, to see whether the town of Brookfield shall participate in the Attorney General's abandoning, abandoned housing initiative or take any action relative there to Ms. Cook. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town of Brookfield participate in the Attorney General's abandoned housing initiative. What? Second. Okay. You want to explain anything? Or? Yes, I do. I want to make sure that people understand if you're voting yes, you support this initiative, if you vote no, you're against it. That said, I'm going to urge everyone here to vote no, because this initiative tramples on the constitutional property rights of Americans. Let me explain. 
The Attorney General's Housing Initiative Program was never passed by the legislature. The funding for it comes from a court settlement. What the Attorney General's Initiative does is it was intended to go after blight, houses that are run down. Now, and what the Attorney General does is it takes an owner who has a piece of rundown property to the court. Now, you're probably all thinking, that's a good idea, because we save money, we don't have to spend money on town council. But here's where the problem has some problems. If the attorney, if you've been paying taxes on a piece of abandoned property, and the Attorney General takes you to court and says you have to fix up your house and you refuse to do that, the court can then impose that a housing contractor come in and repair the property. And then if you refuse to pay the housing contractor, then the court can seize your property to pay the contractor. Now, it strikes me is that's a bit un-American. In fact, it strikes me that's the type of program one would find in Castro's Cuba, Putin's Russia, or Xi Jinping's China. Okay? It crosses the line. And by the way, this has never been looked at by a higher court as to whether it's constitutional. It crosses the line because the Fifth Amendment grants you a right to own property, which the government can only take by eminent domain, and then they have to compensate you. In this case, what the court could do for someone who's been paying their taxes, who doesn't have the money to repair the house, it could seize their property and turn it over to another individual. Now, we all recently celebrated Memorial Day, and we paid tribute to all the American men and women who gave, paid the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms we have. One of those freedoms is the right to own property. It's granted, it's enshrined in the Fifth Amendment to the United States Constitution. And this program tramples on those rights. It may be well-intentioned, but it's wrong. And we need to tell the Attorney General that the town of Brookfield stands up for American values and wants no part. Carmen Eaton. Uh, moderator, uh, I attended a conference or a session with the Attorney General's office. There's some misconceptions about this. This is about abandoned houses. This is not about houses that are owned and occupied by anybody. They're abandoned, they're unoccupied. In this town, we have about 30 houses that people have walked away from. We do not have to go and we're not going after anybody's house that people live in. These are houses that are unoccupied. They've been unoccupied some for three, four, five years. And all you do is you, you don't have to follow the program. You can just give a list to the Attorney General's office of two, three, four, ten houses. They will come out, do a visual inspection. They will tell you that if this qualifies for this program. They will do title searches. They will contact the banks generally who own these properties. They will contact them. They will uh, do inspections with the permission of the bank. And they will contact those people and say, we would like you to fix up this house to meet codes, uh, codes, regulations, safety, for safety reasons, for health reasons. They, this program has been implemented in the Commonwealth. A third of the towns in the Commonwealth have participated in this program. Uh, over uh, over uh, a thousand houses have been completed. 300 are in the process of being completed. We are not going after any homeowner who has a property. We are going after houses that have been unoccupied, have been abandoned, and we can get an opportunity to get them fixed up. Typically, 80% of the time, once the Attorney General uh, contacts the bank, and says, you, you, we'd like you to fix up this house. 80% of the time, the banks do this. I don't understand why we don't want to go after uh, these properties where, uh, that are bank-owned. Uh, most of them are bank-owned, I must say. Not all of them, bank-owned. Uh, and uh, get them fixed up. Get the banks to fix them up. 
we can turn these houses over to uh, veterans, to first time buyers, whoever, but they, right now they're sitting vacant and uh, it would be nice to get them uh, occupied and uh, in there, 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 people are paying taxes on them. The banks are paying taxes on them. I, I, I understand that, but we'd like to get the properties uh, uh, back into the town and being very operative. I'll answer any questions if anybody has any. Mr. Moderator, move to pass over this article. Well, before we accept his motion, there are two two people behind him and one person had a three. 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 She's a short person. Three. Yeah, you got me. <laughs> okay, three people. Go ahead. I just want to rebut a couple of comments. First of all, the Board of Health has the authority under the state sanitary code to condemn a property. What it doesn't generally do is then go to make the next step, which says someone has to fix it up and have the court get involved. And, and if you don't pay the bill, turn it over to someone. And as I asked when the young attorneys were here from the Attorney General's office, were there any higher court have ever looked at this program? The answer is they haven't. Um, there are some groups starting, this has actually been coming up a number of other states. It's just starting to be challenged in the courts. But there's a real question as to this constitutionality. And again, it strikes at the heart of one of our freedoms as an American, the right to own property, which the government can't take except by eminent domain and with just compensation. Russ Banoff. Mr. Moderator, uh, I would encourage my fellow citizens to vote for this initiative by the Attorney General. I think there's a lot of good things that can come out of it. Brookfield is not a town that you drive into and get a tremendous sense that uh, things are being uh, kept up. And there are some properties that are some real problems in terms of um, really setting the pace for what the perceived home values might be in this town. And um, Apart from that, without any kind of hyperbole about patriotism and constitutionality, I would argue that um, you know the town's going to be in a in a much tougher place if one of these blighted properties uh, results in some kind of lawsuit for the town. Um, I think we're going to be looking at spending a lot more money uh, if a house falls in on some kids that are playing there. You know, so I think it's something we need to think about, and I would encourage my fellow citizens to um, work in the direction of cleaning up Brookfield. Mr. Um, I think we got too much government intervention in our lives now. Um, this, this to me is, is, is right out Nazism, and I'm going to say it right here to everyone here. You're saying about houses falling in. These are bank-owned houses. They're paying the town taxes. All communities are going through this problem. How many other communities are doing this? Very, very few. The banks turn these houses over, they get fixed up, and we move on. We're getting our taxes right now. They're not abandoned. If a house is abandoned, that means no taxes are being paid, nothing's being renovated, the grass isn't being cut. So these are not abandoned houses. The banks are still paying this town tax money, and I think we should vote against this because we've got too much government intervention in our lives now. And what we're saying is our own town government and Committees and boards in this town can't do their job if you bring in the HE. That's what we're saying. So I think we should vote totally against this. Uh, uh, just, just to clarify. Uh, Before, he wasn't in line. Mr. He wasn't in line. I'm out. Mr. Uh, I don't think he was in line when Mr. O'Connell made his motion. Okay. So if he's going to make his motion. I would make that motion. To move the question. Move no. the question. No, no. Pass, pass over. Pass over. Pass over. Pass over. Pass over. Hold on. Pass over. Pass over. Hold on. Okay. And the, the, just the second to move the question. Is there a second? No, no, no. Pass over. Pass over. Oh, okay. Second. Pass over. Second. Second to that. Second. All right. All right. We need a probably end up with a standing vote on this one. All those in favor of passing over this article, would you please say aye? Aye. 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 All those in favor of not passing over the article, would you please say no? No. no. 
count is do it. I want to make sure we got this one right. All those in favor of passing over this article, would you please stand? <coughs> Can you, can, you, can you let them know? I hope so. Okay, we, uh, we got 16. 16. What do we, what do we want? And you have? 29. 29. Okay. All those in fav favor of not passing over the article, um, would you please stand? The article is passed over by a vote of 45 to 6. <laughs> article 20. To see if the town. Oh boy, here we go. To see whether the town of Brookfield shall provide a $500 yearly stipend to each member of the advisory committee or take any action relative to this. Mr. Moderator. Yes, I move that the town of Brookfield provide a $500 yearly stipend to each member of the advisory committee. Is there a second? Second. Okay. okay. Motion if, made and seconded. If I may speak. Okay. Thank you. Um, the, an advisory or finance committee is required by state law. Every other board in town that's required by state law, school committee, planning board, receives a $500 stipend per member. I think it's unfair to the advisory board, which is next to the selectmen, the hardest working committee in this town, not to receive some form of stipend for their services. In addition to which, and you can ask the advisory board if they concur, they've had trouble recruiting a full squad of members. I think if you want quality people to serve and you want a full squad, you should give them a stipend just as you do anybody else serving on one of these state mandated boards. Before you go, Mr. Cook, yes. um, the $500, yes. is it coming from a source or is this raise and appropriate? It will be raise and appropriate. Okay. And each member of each the member. clerk also? No. The clerk no. already gets it. The clerk already gets so it some $4, form of compensation. Okay. It's just for the members. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, I know, I believe that there is some bylaw against paying the advisory board any money from when we were on the advisory board years ago. Um, I don't know if it was a town bylaw or a state bylaw, but it was against the law to pay the members of the advisory committee. So has anybody checked into that? On the, there's an association of advisory boards and finance committees, and about 20% of the towns which are required to have them do, do pay. So it's, pay. well, again, and as chairman of the bylaw committee, I don't recall any bylaw prohibiting payment to the advisory board. Um, so again. Mr. Moderator, can I speak to that? You sure may. Um, if you check our current bylaw, I, I believe, and I was about to pull it up online, I believe our current bylaw states that they shall serve without pay except for the clerk. Um, however, it is not against any of the mass general laws to say to, to pay the finance committee or the advisory committee. Um, but Mr. Moderator, from, from my own personal perspective, I'm hearing the argument that you know, we're having a hard time filling seats on the advisory committee because it's an uncompensated position. Quite frankly, I don't want to serve with people on this advisory committee if $500 is going to get them to put their time in because we're going to get what we pay for. Before I recognize anybody, I'm looking Mr. 
probably check the small one. Okay. Um, well, I can say it too. I was a member of that through you, Mr. Moderator, my name is Jeffrey Blake. Uh, good evening. I'm from Copeland and Page, your town council. And with respect to the question, which I believe was, is there a prohibition in the bylaw? Under Chapter uh, 4, Section 2, at the very end of, of it, it says, said committee shall choose its own officers and shall, with the exception of its secretary, serve without pay. So um, I guess to the extent to the extent that, that uh, this bylaw or, or this article number uh, 20, uh, I guess it would be then looked at as an amendment to that bylaw. And that would be a question for scope for the for the moderator to make, whether or not he believes that that would, um, the article uh, sufficiently warrants people that we're trying to amend the bylaw. And the answer to that is no. Unless the bylaw committee has met and talked about this, um, then I don't think um, the the question is or the statement is um, said committee shall choose its own members and shall, with the exception of its secretary, serve without pay. So unless the bylaw committee has met and discussed this, then there's no real notice to anyone that the bylaw is going to be changed. And if you look other places in the bylaws, um, it says about you needing notice to propose bylaw changes. So um, I guess I'm going to short circuit this, this debate and, and rule this out of order. And we will continue with. Mr. Moderator, if I could make one more point, just as a point of information. Yeah. I've served on planning board for almost, I think, more than a decade now. and. That is an elected board. We get a stipend. And the last two elections have had unopposed candidates run or write-in candidates run. And we get a stipend. So giving somebody $500 for serving on a board is no guarantee that it's going to up the number of volunteers, in my estimation. Okay. Mr. Moderator, may I just clarify? Um, I was on a board with you, and I've been on the advisory board for close to 10 years, and I can say in that 10 years, we rarely had a full board. Um, maybe a couple of times, but rarely is that board ever full. So money is not a reason for somebody to join the board. You either want, either want to be serving your town, or you don't. We're moving, we're moving on to Article 21. We're taking no action on this one. Moderator ruled it out of order. To see at the town will vote to transfer some of money from the ambulance receipts reserved account to fund the fiscal 2017 emergency squad expense account or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator, yes, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $41,500 from the ambulance receipt reserve account to fund the fiscal 2017 emergency squad expense account. Okay. <coughs> Motion made and seconded. Do we want to have any discussion on this one? If not, then we'll move on to Section 22. Mr. Moderator, I could speak on behalf of the well, uh, chief. Just a second. Do you want to read first? The town vote to transfer a sum of money from the ambulance receipts reserved account to fund the fiscal 2017 emergency squad wages account or take any action relative thereto. Who's got the motion on this one? I do. Mr. Well, Mr. Moderator. I believe it's going to be the same motion. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $172,893 from the ambulance receipt reserved account to fund the fiscal 2017 emergency squad wages account. 172,893? Yes. 172,893. It's the same figure on the sheet of line item 2350. All right. 
Second. Oh, we lost that person. Oh, okay. They preempted me. Okay. <laughs> Any other discussion? Okay. If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, <clears throat> no. All right. That's, that's done. Um, next one. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, transfer a sum of money from free cash to the road construction account or take any action relative there too. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $35,000 from free cash to the road reconstruction account. Second. Second. Did you say 45, Linda? 35. 35. 35. Okay. All right, any discussion on this one? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Okay, that's a vote. Article 24, to see if the town is about to transfer a sum of money from free cash to the center of line painting the town or take any action relative to their case. Mr. Moderator, yes, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $7,500 from free cash to the center line painting account. That motion made and seconded. Any? Mr. Moderator, where is this money coming from now when the roads get, the center lines get done? Mr. Moderator? Yes, sir. From that account. Oh, okay. Any other questions? If not, all those in favor of the article, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. That's a vote. Uh, next one. To see if the town will vote to transfer sum of money from the driveway permitting account to the driveway repair account or take any action to help the Mr. Moderator, yes, I move that the town vote to transfer a sum of $150 from the driveway permit account to the driveway repair account. Second. Motion made and seconded for a transfer of $150. Any discussion on this one? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Okay. Can you still hear me in back? <coughs> all right. To see if the town votes to transfer a sum of money from free cash to the fleet repair replace account to purchase materials for making repairs to the dump sander body on the 1991 <coughs> truck and platform body on the 1997 <coughs> board or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator? Yes, ma'am. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $4,700 from free cash to the fleet repair replacement account to purchase materials for making repairs to the dump sander body on the 1991 Mack truck and the platform body on the 1997 Ford. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on this one? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. And that's taken care of. Um, Article 27, to see if the town will vote to transfer a sum of money for free cash to the fleet <coughs> repair replace account to rehab the 1980 Mack truck to a catch basin <coughs> or purchase Something without a word. Through a catch basin, or purchase a used truck which can be retro retrofitted as a catch basin truck, or take any action relative there Mr. Moderator? Yes, sir. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $10,000 from free cash to the fleet repair re replace account to rehab the 19 1980 Mack truck to a catch basin, or purchase a used truck to be retrofitted as a catch basin tr truck. Um, just want to clarify something. 1980 Mack truck with catch basin truck. Catch basin truck. Neither, it wasn't said that way. Oh, I was probably going to read it. Catch basin truck? Catch basin. It might be late, but we're still trying to keep up with this stuff. So. If someone would make a friendly amendment to include the word truck after the catch basin, we'll be in business. So moved. Okay. Um, any discussion on this one? 
Um, Mr. Moderator, um, it was expressed to the advisory committee that this would be used um, for retrofitting uh, the 1980 Mack truck. We were assured that that could be done, so I guess I'm wondering why the verbiage for or purchase a used truck when we've been told that this can be done. Okay, let's answer the question. Long day, Herb. Yep. Haven't been home yet, so been up since here six. Um, the reason that we put the verbiage in like that is the truck can be done and everything else, but the truck is a 1980. If we possibly come across a newer truck for the same amount of money, that's a lot newer than a 1980, we should take and buy it. There is some trucks out there that are less than $10,000 that we can make work. Okay, so your average, well, I don't know what pool of vehicles you're pulling from, but they have to have a certain bed length, is that correct? I mean, it seems to me that kind of lowers the pool that you have to draw from. The, the average truck out the no I'm sorry I'm using the wrong wrong word the best truck out there as you see them out there is the trucks that are delivering home heating oil okay. are the best trucks out there for a catch basin truck they're the right length and everything else and the right GVWs okay. If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Another <laughs> vote. Article 28. You see if the town of votes to transfer some of money for free cash to the fleet repair replace account to repair the center pins and bushings on the 1995 dresser loader. Or take any action relative there. Mr. Moderator? Yes, sir. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $6,000 from free, uh, free cash to the fleet repair replace account to repair the center pins and bushings in the 1995 dresser loader. Okay. okay. Comments, questions, discussion? I make a motion we pass over this article. Okay, me? Yeah. I don't, un don't understand why. We need, we need, we need, we need, we need the equipment and it needs to be done, so. I've spoke to the selectmen and staff about this. Um, the machine has cost the town a lot of money already. We've had, the town had to put a transmission in before my time at $15,000. We've had to put a motor in it already. We've done a set of, uh, set of pins already on it. Mm -hmm. It's not worth having the machine around anymore. The transmission, I, it's starting to have issues again. Uh, what would it cost to fix the transmission as opposed to buying a whole new dresser loader? That transmission, you're probably looking at $30,000 right now. And what's the cost of a loader? A new loader right now is probably about $170,000. <laughs> the thing is, is it's, I'm not looking at town money to purchase this machine, all right? I'm making a motion to pass over it for now. Uh, Mr. Hooker, I got a question for you, Herb. Um, do we really need to have, so you're talking about buying a new payload that would come out of Chapter 90 money, the 170? Is that what you're... I didn't make any motion about uh, buying a new loader right now. But you're insinuating that. Somewhere along the line, we're going to have to get a machine that's in better shape than what we have. We cannot put bad money at a bad piece of... Okay, I, un I understand that. But the que my another question is, do we really need to have two payloaders plus a backhoe in this town? We always got away with one, and we didn't have a backhoe at the time. Now we get a backhoe plus a payloader plus this one. The town's had two loaders for decades, all right? Uh, not decades, but... 
Oh yeah. Before. Okay, I understand. All right. The, the, the town. I'm gonna interrupt you. Go ahead, Tom. Um, the motion is to pass it. That's correct. And so, if if you want to keep the discussion going, I make. I'm good. All right. Thank you. Pass the thing over and go on to something else, and that's what that's what you want to vote for. So, all those in favor of passing over this article, please say aye. 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 All those opposed to passing over, please say no. All right. We're going on to another one. All right. Article 29. You see if the town of Boca transfer a yeah. sum of money from free cash to the fleet replaced repair account to fund planned vehicle replacements and unplanned vehicle repairs or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $62,767.38 from free cash to the Replace repair account to fund planned vehicle replacements and unplanned vehicle repairs. Give that dollar amount again. Motion please. is made and seconded to transfer sixty-two thousand seven hundred sixty-seven dollars and thirty-eight cents. Thirty-eight cents. Okay. Any discussion on this one? How much money do we have in this account? As of the May 3rd ledger that I checked today that was on the wall, it said that it was $19,093.02. And do we have any specific replace, repair jobs in mind for this? Yeah, we were, yeah, I went, we were going to replace the um, police cruiser for the chief and then also uh, the one for the fire chief. Okay. Just curious why the change in the figure from the printed version. Because we had our, uh, there was a shortfall with the free cash. Okay. Then the total though, what we come up to just seems low and there is money available from 28. So well, we, we, just, we just didn't spend 6,000 that we were planning on spending. <coughs> So would there be any we actually financial? Have another, we, have another, we have another twenty thousand as well from the special. So. Yes, but didn't we want to put so that? Clarify it to me. Is anybody keeping a running total on free cash? Yes. 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 No. Do you have one, Jim? No. No, as of right now, this moment. And if someone is keeping a running total, would you share it with us? Just a second, I gotta reorganize some stuff here. But I'm not hearing very much, so I guess. If, if you if you give me one minute, I'll have it for you. Which? Okay. We have about 170,000 left. Is that including Nicola's? You that in. No, that's Nicola raised. That's raised in appropriate. Oh, no, that's no. raised right too. Okay. Actually, I have 146,000 right now. But if we just keeping on the same theme. Two twenty-two. Sorry. Two twenty-two. No, we started. Yeah, no, we started with two twenty-seven. Everybody agreed. That oh, that was from the special, right? From the special, special too. Yeah. Okay. So from the special, we started with we started with two twenty-seven. Uh, with the. You could technically add another twenty-six thousand yeah. into it. Mine is out of order. I'm going to give us about another minute. To See if we can answer. Mr. Moderator? Yes, sir. Uh, based on the last votes and the special and this annual, we, we currently have another $26,000. So if, if the chief wants to make a motion to add 26000 to that, they'll basically give us $0 at the end for free cash at the end of this warrant. Mm, I just don't have a calculator in front of me, but I'd offer an amendment to add 26000 to the figure Mrs. Lincoln proposed, which evades me right now. Somebody with a calculator or a phone. Well, I need a, I need a number. Yeah. So how about Mr. Mr. So, so Mr. Moderator? Why don't we round it? Mr. Moderator. The 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 figure is eighty eight eighty eight thousand seven hundred and sixty seven dollars and thirty eight cents. Yes. So moved. Okay. Okay. Motion is made and seconded. 
to change the amount. Be an accountant. Can you see on my we can take discussion on that or the entire thing. Pat, you're next. I'd like to know why the advisory board um, made a recommendation of only 35000 in that account. That's my first question. And my second question is, why would we take all of our free cash and transfer it into the fleet account? Why wouldn't we leave some in reserve? Okay, we have two questions there. So let's take the advisory board one first. Um, why they recommended 35,000? Um, originally, it's just for one one police cruiser, and but now later on, it came into the fact that the police chief is going to get one also. So the 35,000 was printed, and now we're back. We're going to get two uh, cruisers: one for the fire chief and one for the police chief. That answers your question. Mr. Moderator, yeah. and, the, and the second question is that the Board of Selectmen, uh, through capital improvements, would like to see that fleet account raised, and we put our magic number at 100000 okay. Mr. Moderator, uh, this, uh, at the special town meeting, uh, we uh, there had been an article to transfer money in, back into stabilization, fulfilling a commitment uh, made at last year's annual town meeting. If we increase the money being put into the fleet stabilization account or whatever its proper name is, uh, are we then eliminating the possibility of fulfilling the pledge that the board wanted to make? Uh, uh, I, I, you know, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. These are both capital. Stabilization usually is a, a place that we fund some of our capital expenses from. But I just wanted to remind the board and the advisory committee that they intended to do that. That, if you remember when we did the special, I did remind everyone that the town did make a commitment, and we and we voted to put the sixty back in the stabilization. So we only voted forty at the special. So we should keep we should keep our word to the townspeople of last year at the annual town meeting. Somehow, move the question. Okay. We're going to vote on the amendment first? Yep. Yep, we will. But first, we have to end debate. So, any, all those in favor of moving the question and ending debate on this, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Okay. Now, the motion, um, Mr. Consular, would you read what the... 87, so I, I don't think I had it right. Mr. Moderator, the motion uh, that Chief Martel made was $88,767.38. Okay, who did that? Mr. Moderator. All those in favor of that number, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. 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 No, motion passes. So now, now that is the main motion. So again, we're voting on the same number, the 88-635. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. No. Okay, that's a vote. Article 30. <coughs> See if the town will vote to transfer a sum of money to free cash to the library building, whoops, the library building repair and maintenance account or take any action relative there. Mr. Moderator, yes, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $10,000 from free cash to the library building repair and maintenance account. Motion made and seconded. $10,000 for the library. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay, that's the vote. 31. To see if the town is about to transfer a sum of money for free cash to the fire and air tanks clothing account to purchase air tanks and protective clothing for the fire department 
or take any action relative there too. Mr. Moderator? Yes, sir. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $20,000 from free cash to f uh, fire air tanks clothing account to purchase air tanks and protective clothing for the fire department. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on Mrs. Um, I am always in favor of making sure that our firefighters have the gear that they need to keep them safe and do their job. Um, however, um, the fire chief was asked um, at a number of meetings to please submit to us what would amount to a capital improvement plan um, for his equipment, um, giving us some history as to what has already been replaced and what he proposes to be re replaced in the next few years um, so we can just have an, uh, you know, some kind of idea of what's going on in that department since um, every year we do put um, thousands of dollars into that line. Um, he said he did have, um, I believe, some software um, that was been made available that he would be able to do that with, but um, I'd like to see uh, that report. Um, it's just a good um, base to have to see where we are with um, some expenditures we may have in the future. Well, I had submitted things in at least two different formats. I, the second one, um, Ms. Coughlin was going to translate I, into I something in a, be, in a better to, form. I, was I do that. stuff more of a narrative form because. Excel I was about to say I was the broken me. link. Yeah, Mr. Moderator, I was about to to say I'm the broken link on the communication on that because I received it two weeks ago from the chief and didn't get it to the rest of the committee. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor of transferring the. $20,000, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. All right, that's done. Article 32. To see if the town will vote to transfer a sum of money from free cash to purchase hydraulic rescue equipment for the fire department or take any action relative there. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $4,000 for free cash to purchase hydraulic rescue equipment for the fire department. Second. Okay. Any discussion on this one? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. That's a vote. Article 33. <coughs> I don't know when we're going to make it. To see if the town will vote to transfer some of the money from free cash to a police radio upgrade account to replace the two base radios at the police station <coughs> and one cruiser radio due to a radio upgrade that will need to be complete within the next three years or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $14,400 from free cash to a police radio upgrade account to replace the two base radios at the police station and one cruiser radio due to a radio upgrade that will need to be completed within the next three years. Okay, motion made and seconded. Discussion on this one. If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that's a vote. 34. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, transfer or borrow a sum of money from the Water Department Surplus Account and the Water Department System Improvement Account for the purchase of a new truck for the Water Department or take any action relative thereto. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $35,000 from the Water Department Surplus Account and the Water Department Systems Improvement Account for the purchase of a new truck for the, for the Water Department or take any action relative thereto. No. 
just it's late and I'm being a stickier, but uh, is is the accountant satisfied that without saying how much is coming out of each account, we're okay? Well, well first off, no money should come out of the water the maintenance account. Well, wait a minute, Bruce. Then before we get to that, let's let me deal with my issue. That was my question. I don't know if the thirty-five thousand is coming out. So, I have an I have an even better question. Is we spoke with water commissioners at the last selectmen's meeting, and they were contemplating passing over this article. Exactly. Is that what you're standing there for? Exactly. Okay. So it's moot. So, Mr. Moderator, I make a motion to pass over Article Thirty-Four. Mr. Moderator, yes. I move the town vote to transfer the sum of 15000 from free cash to, to the cemetery shed account to build a new addition to the cemetery shed. Second. Motion made and seconded. Okay, item number 16, Board of Selectmen Meeting, Monday, October 25, 2009. Two things. Um, one, do they have any available funds to do this without transferring from free cash? No. No. I don't know. And do they need the shed? Henry Manning, Cemetery Commissioner. Um, we took a vote on the cemetery commissioners that we do need a new shed. Uh, we have equipment that's sitting outside that we can't house. We don't have no room. The building's falling apart. Um, it needs to be worked on. And, and we put a coat of paint on it a couple of years ago, but it's like putting uh, whipstick on a pig. It's just the same thing. It needs to be replaced. Uh, yes, at one of the advisory meetings, um, someone, um, I don't know if it was Mr. Siri, Mr. Leahy, I, I don't remember, but someone mentioned there might be a problem with uh, the building extending into wetlands. Has that been cleared up? Yeah, we had a meeting with the uh, Conservation Commission and they see no problem with it. Mr. Moderator, yes. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $13,500 from free cash to the campground fund account for the removal of structures and debris in the area of the former campground at Hobbs and Pine Lane. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion on this one. I can add where we are with the uh, campground activity if that would be helpful to the audience. No, we're all set. <laughs> Thank you, Herb. <laughs> Any other <laughs> comments? Okay. All those in favor of the transfer, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Okay. Article 37. To see if the town will vote to amend the town letter. Chapter 12. This lady is my mother. As printed in the book here. Mr. Moderator, 
<laughs> you won't let you won't let me though. I, I move that the town vote to amend the town's general bylaws, chapter eleven, as written in Article thirty eight. I'm sorry, twelve, as written in Article thirty eight to in the town. 38, or oh, 37, it's printed wrong here, I apologize. In Article 37, the town warrant, starting with the words, Section 1, inoperable, except that the phrase, or take any action relative thereto, be omitted. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Um, Mr. Chairman, I think you should explain to the townspeople what this is all about. This is concerning Brookfield Motors and a neighbor neighbor dispute. I think you should uh, explain. To, I know it's late, but I think the people in, in the town should know what's going on here. Mr. Moderator, yes. this was a citizen's petition, and the citizen is actually making his way to the microphone, and I would I would yield to his discussion. Moderator, Roland Blaze, 5 Maple Street. It's my understanding that some of the town officials opposed this uh, particular article. Um, it's not just in, re in regards to just Brookfield Motors, it's any commercial dealer who has little respect or courtesy for the adjacent neighbors. I'm an adjacent neighbor, and I don't feel that we as adjacent neighbors, residential neighbors, have to put up with all of this unnecessary or uh, this uh, clutter or people who hoard, and uh, it is my it is my wish that the town will consider uh, making an amends on this Article 37 uh, to bring some restrictions in regards to uh, business owners, commercial owners, and even uh, residential people who have little respect for their adjacent neighbors who just like to hoard. They just leave all their clutter, and and there are some neighbors like myself who take a great deal of respect. Uh, for the property, uh, we also pay taxes, and we have the we have the same right for courtesy and respect, and we would we would appreciate that our neighbors, including uh, Brookfield Motors, would take some courtesy and clean up their act. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mr. Oh. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, the bylaw committee, on which I chair. Uh, actually looked at this proposal for Mr. Blaze, and we decided that we could not support it. Um, we viewed it as a dispute between neighbors. But again, and I, we had some concerns about this. Um, in particular, some of these words here, like active commercial motor vehicle sales and active farms, um, all this is open to interpretation. And we just, to me, involve lawsuits to clarify what it means. And I, we just didn't see a point for doing this because we're really getting involved in the neighbor dispute and we didn't think we needed to burden the town with any more regulation. Mr. Moderator, I make a motion that we pass over this article. <coughs> Second. Uh, my hand people up here that have been waiting to speak for a while. So we'll grab it. Yeah, um, this is just putting more hindrance on our businesses in town here. We're trying to get businesses back on Route 9, which, which, which uh, Brookfield Motors is paying 16000 in real estate taxes. They've been a good neighbor and a good business in our town. East Brookfield's got a great tax rate down there. Uh, they have a lot of businesses on Route 9. Um, what's concerning here is those three vehicles at Brookfield, just so you have some update on what's going on with this. Brookfield Motors has three uh, vehicles in their backyard. That's the whole niche here. Brookfield Motors used to have 150 to 200 cars there. Now he's down to three, and he, we want to change the bylaws. So that means if you have a commercial property now and it's inoperable, you can't keep your car there. If it's a repair shop, so on and so forth. It's just putting more hindrance on the commercial properties in this town, businesses, commercial businesses. So I'm voting against it. You do this, do whatever. Thank you. Yes, and I encourage Mr. Blaze, and I, I thank him for coming forward with the concern that he expressed. Uh, as far as the, the article that was there before and the article that would be proposed and be voted on, with the word active was added. Uh, I, I respect Mr. Cook's uh, opinion that there might be some concern as far as that particular word and it 
being disputed and the like. The reality is that Brookfield Motors is up for sale. Their permit runs out, the current business permit runs out in February of next year as I understand it. And for right now, I, I see it as that particular individual gaming the system, taking advantage of a, of a bylaw or the intent that those vehicles not be there. So again, I want to thank Mr. Blaze for bringing it forward and I think we should applaud his efforts to try to do what he's trying to do. Thank you. Okay, someone had made a motion Pass over that. Yeah. You want to make it? Yeah, I made a motion to pass over the article. Second. Second. Is there a second to it? Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor of passing over the article, please say aye. 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 All those opposed to passing over the article, please say no. No. Okay. The ayes have it, and we pass over the second. 38. To see if the town will vote to amend the town's general bylaws, Chapter Four Advisory Committee is as follows. Or take any action relative to Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to amend the town's general bylaws, Chapter Four, as written in Article 38 of the warrant, starting with the word "delete the advisory." Accept the phrase or take action relative thereto omitted. Okay. Motion second. Motion made and seconded to change the bylaw relative to the advisory committee. So are we having someone to speak to it or? Mr. Moderator, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll be pleased to speak to this. Uh, we brought this up a couple of years ago. It's literally the same exact wording as we proposed uh, several years ago. It literally changes the uh, advisory committee to a finance committee uh, just by name. Everything that you see in this warrant that is highlighted uh, in bold, I'm sorry, uh, is the only changes. It's basically stating that the finance committee would submit their budget to the Board of Selectmen. It uh, melds in the actual Capital Improvement Planning Committee and deletes that in our in our uh, bylaws. And we've had Ms. Pecor state that they're already doing that, uh, her capital improvement request from the fire chief. Um, Ms. Coughlin has stated in the Brookfield Citizen that the Finance Committee uh, deals with capital improvements and uh, finances as well. Uh, it's time to do this and I would ask everyone to finally meld these two committees together and call it what it is. Mr. Moderator, uh, Mr. Comtois, could you please explain why you want to get rid of the Capital Planning Committee? Other than they're doing the work, I think it's best to keep the two separate. They've already got already have enough work on the advisory committee without doing capital improvement also. Mr. Moderator? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the Capital Planning Improvement Committee, I was a member of that, hasn't been in, hasn't had any activity whatsoever in existence for I believe it's been two years. Um, we can't fill the committee, thus the committee in my opinion is non-existent. Um, it, it is time to move that through statements of this advisory committee. They're already doing the work that we're adding into this. It's a five-year capital improvement plan. And again, we've had two members state that they're already doing this work. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move an amendment and add a section six to this article. The committee members shall be eligible for a stipend if so approved by town meeting. <laughs> town clerk points, I'll give it to him in writing. You want it in writing? Yes. Start writing. <laughs> uh, I'll go back and ask the same question that I asked before. Yep. Did the advisory committee, did the bylaw committee <coughs> meet and discuss this? Um, Mr. Moderator, as chairman of the bylaw committee, we did not review this article as proposed, the entire article. Nor were we ever actually requested to do so. Okay. Mr. Moderator, I move that we pass over this article. Okay. okay, we have a couple of people behind you, so they get to speak, and then we'll take it up. Just for a point of clarification, I may have gotten misquoted at some point previously saying that I 
stated that the current advisory committee is the one who's doing the capital plan. We advise on all things related to so-called Proposition 2.5, which would be the warrant articles, which generally include capital items, but does not include a comprehensive capital plan. It's a subtle difference, but it's an important one. I'd like to ask the advisory board why they do not approve this article. I'll do the best I can. Um, one of the reasons was uh, we're not getting all the d documentation, finances, numbers um, due to the some of our situation in our finance uh, department. I don't need I say any more than that, but we really haven't gotten all the all the data that we need on the board, and that's why we when we get more data and we know exactly where we're going with figures and numbers, then we would then we'd be we'd take it on. But right now, we don't have all the numbers that we should be getting on our meetings. Okay, who had made the motion to pass over? Mr. O'Connell? So moved. Okay, do we have a second? Second. second. Okay, motion is made and seconded to pass over the article. All those in favor of passing it over, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Return. You have to pass. Okay. And I'm getting you. article 39. See if the town will vote to accept the following changes in Chapter 15, Personal Bylaw, or take any action relative to Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to accept the changes in Chapter 15, Personal Bylaws, written in Article 39, the town war of the town warrant, starting with the words Chapter 15, Personal Bylaw. <coughs> Mr. Moderator. Okay. Yep, go ahead. Mr. Moderator, I move to pass over this article. Okay. Motion made and seconded to pass over this article. Why? Mr. Moderator, it was strongly advised by town council to pass over this article due to legality and the liability that it would place on the town. We will be work. Do we have any other? Is the present town council the one who did, in fact, advise against this article? Mr. Moderator? Yes. No, but he concurs with the opinion of town council that, that advised us. I would like to give the current town council permission to speak directly to this question. Mr. Moderator, yep. I believe the uh, there was a motion on the floor before. Through you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, again, my name is Jeffrey Blake, and um, we do have some concerns with this, specifically under Chapter 40, Section 21A and 41, Section 108. What we have here is that a town can, by bylaw, agree to um, uh, for a classification and agree to paid leave. And what this proposed amendment appears to do is to uh, delete those portions of the bylaw so it doesn't propose to um, replace it with anything with respect to a bylaw. So our concerns are that suddenly then you don't have the authority to give the benefits that you currently are giving. I know what you, you want to do with it. You want to put it in a personnel handbook, but I think that the way this is written, you would need to do it a little bit differently to in order to comply with 4021A and 41108A. Those references the, being Mass General Law, correct? Uh, correct. And okay. th those are our concerns. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other comments or questions? We have a motion to uh, pass over the article. All those in favor of passing it over, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Okay. We're skipping on to the next one. Article 40. The city of the town shall require that full time police officers complete full time police officer academy training prior to being hired by the town of Brookfield or taking action relative there. Mr. Moderator, yeah. I move that the town vote to require that full-time police officers complete full-time police officer academy training prior to being hired by the town of Brookfield. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Do we have any comments, questions, discussion on this one? We have lots of people coming up. I'm going to ask that we 
defeat this motion. Um, this came up last year um, and it, it was passed over, I believe. I, I request that you don't limit my uh, ability to you're limiting the pool of candidates that I can choose from. Um, there already are safeguards or, or preventions uh, to prevent this from happening. First of all, I don't plan on hiring anyone um, that's not full-time academy trained anytime in the near future. Um, even if I do choose to do so, I am not the appointing authority. I have to go in front of the Board of Selectmen. So if they don't think it's a good idea, if it's not a good fit, they can certainly say no and go back and get somebody that's already full-time academy trained. Um, long story short, if you know, if you limit the pools, people will not be interested in applying on a part-time basis because a lot of part-timers, they look for police departments that they may have an opportunity or just a, a, a slight chance of becoming a full-time officer. Word gets out that they, they that that's not going to ever happen here, which it won't happen anytime soon. But if it if it's permanent, then you're going to get a, a a a lot fewer part-time officers looking to come here trying to get on full-time. I don't know if that kind of makes sense, but I recommend you do not support this article. I move to pass over this article. Yeah, well, we got two. Okay. Mr. Holcraft? Let Jen go. Jen can go. Uh, I would. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Um, the advisory board brought this forward. It's more, as long as you people know where your tax dollars are going. Um, if the chief does hire someone and the selectman goes along with it, this person is going to go to the academy for six months, and we're going to have to fill the slot anyway with, with someone else, a part-timer, while he's at the academy. And while he's at the academy for six months, he's going to get full pay from the town of Brookfield. Plus, we got to pay for his academy training. Now, last year, we brought this up, and we had an individual who was a very good police officer, uh, and the chief said he was not going to leave. We paid for him to go to the academy, we paid his six months full-time pay while he was there. And he didn't stay here more than a year. He's now working in another department. And it wasn't because of pay. He just chose to go to North Brookfield. So we lost a good officer, and we lost all the taxpayers' money. So um, this is more or less that you all know that this is occurring. North Brookfield did the same. They hired three guys without full-time academy. They went to town, paid for their academy and their training, and they paid them full-time while they were there. All three of them left within a year. They're all gone. And the town of North Brookfield paid their schooling. So if this is the type of practice we want to continue in our town, then you can defeat it. But if this continues, we don't want this type of practice going on. And if the highway hires someone with no licenses, and we have to pay and train them down there, that's not good. That's not either. That's the same difference as a police officer. So, thank you. Mr. Moderator, I completely agree that we need to pass over this article. I don't think we should be telling the chief how to do his job. The selectmen have the final say over who gets hired and who doesn't. I can't even convey how strongly this bothers me. Um, we're a small town. And, and people come here to get started, it happens. People leave, it happens. It happens in every department. It happens all the time, but I just don't think that we need to be telling the chief how to do his job. And I think that we have a good department. I think we have a fantastic, fabulous chief. And I think when you start limiting his authority and limiting what he can do and he can't do, it's a great way to run him right out of town. Thanks. Okay, Mr. O'Connell, you had the motion to pass over? I second it. You still, still got it? Still got it. You second? Second. Okay. The motion is made and seconded to pass over this article. All those in favor of passing it over, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed to passing it over, please say no. 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 We're going on to the next one. Article 41. Um, to see if the town shall require the part-time police officers complete part-time police officer academy training, Prior to being hired by the town of Brookfield, or take any action relative to <coughs> Mr. Moderator? Uh, yes. I'll do that one. I move that the town vote to require the part time police officers complete part time police officer academy training prior to being hired by the town of Brookfield. Second. Motion made and seconded. I was never consulted on this. I can't hire a part-time officer unless they're part-time academy trained, so it's kind of a moot point. So pass over, defeat, or whatever you want to do. Motion to pass over. Second. Second, okay. Any further discussion? 
All those in favor of passing over this article, please say aye. 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 Mr. Moderator, yes. I move that the town vote to require that a, that a notification be posted on the town common prior to any and all elections or town meetings. Second. Okay. Any discussion on this one? Already do. Don't we already do this? I see a sign out there for all our town meetings and elections. Um, no, the last election that we had actually, the most recent one, there was not notification on the common and P I was told that people showed up at the town hall and were totally unaware that an election was even going on I think people have become accustomed to seeing that sign there and they use that as a beacon um, for their actions what I've had it said that well it's posted in the um, in the Brookfield citizen I'll have to say that not everybody reads the Brookfield Citizen. So uh, it may be posted any variety of ways, but I think over the years, um, people have become reliant on that sign to be there, and I just want to make sure it's there. Um, I was told that it wasn't up because we didn't have an adequate number of letters to make the sign. So I, I don't think that's a good enough reason, and I'd like to make sure that that's put up there so everybody gets to vote. Require how? It says require. Okay. I guess. Okay. Uh, more specifically, does this constitute a bylaw change? <clears throat> Second. No, this is this is not a bylaw change. This is no different than Article. Whatever. It's a motion to pass over. Yeah, but I'm gonna I, I'm gonna answer that question. I'm glad you. I'm glad you. This is no different than if I can. Right here. This is no different than Article 5. You see if the town will instruct the selector. It has the same legal authority as that. It's not a bylaw. So, with that, motion to pass over. Do we have that on the floor? Second. Second. Okay. All in favor of passing over this article, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. No. Okay. Um, <coughs> It's the last one. Yeah. <laughs> Article 43. The city of the town will vote to transfer some of the money from cash to the stabilization account or take any action relative to that. Mr. Moderator. Yeah. I move that the town vote to transfer the amount of $4,999 from free cash to stabilization. Second. Any? Yes, Mr. I'd like to make an amendment to that. I'd like to move that we transfer that amount of $4,999 to reduce the tax rate. To reduce the tax rate, yes. I know it's not, but it's a... Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Um, but my question, my question is, yes. for years, for years we've had an article at the end um, to reduce the tax rate if possible. This is a stabilization account. That's correct. Um, I, mean, I, I don't see this as being within the purviews of whether or not you're going to transfer money to the stabilization account. Well, uh, so I'm not, so I'm not, the simple version is I'm not going to accept it. I'm, I'm going to appeal to town council because I think it's a bona fide motion. Well, you can, you can. I'm, I'm going to appeal. I'm going to appeal. I, I mean, it's a bona fide motion. I have a, I'm making a motion we use the money to reduce the tax rate rather than put in stabilization. 
under chapter 39 section I believe it is 10 the, the moderator has all um, authority over procedure and scope of questions so it's it's really his call I believe under the parliamentary rules I can petition the town meeting to overturn the moderator which I may consider if I thought I'd win the vote <coughs> Uh, question on um, free cash uh, is your motion that is what is available at the end of the town meeting zero oh, at the end of that even moment. though we passed over the thirty five thousand dollars for the uh, for the uh, water department water. it was a transfer that was a transfer oh okay okay thank you I have one final word please Mr. Holcraft made a statement earlier at the beginning of this meeting that free cash is not free cash, it's taxpayer dollars. Our tax rate in this town is approaching $20 per thousand. We spend money like drunken sailors. We have no restraint, no fiscal restraint at all. When are we gonna do something to take the burden off the taxpayers? That's my question to all of you sitting up front. What are you doing to hold the tax rate down? I think the answer is zero, but if you think I'm wrong, speak up. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I'd like to move to uh, make a motion to move the question. Okay. Motion made. Seconded to move the question. All those in favor ending the debate on this, please say aye. 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 Okay. Now, it takes a two thirds vote to move money into stabilization. No. All those in favor <coughs> of the transfer of $4,999. Please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. That's a vote. Okay. Mr. Moderator? Yes. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I've got my hand up. I got my hand up. Okay. And I, can I say, I'm going to say something else before we leave. I have my mind. hand up. Um, there was no one in the, in, the, in the front that gave a financial. Uh, scenario at the beginning of the meeting and we moved a lot of free cash. However, um, it would have been interesting to have someone in the front give where we are versus the levy limit. And just we're way under the levy limit. Yep. And I'll leave it at that. Yes. So you got a last yeah. I, I just we voted on number 18 with the bathroom going into the um, banquet hall. I just I don't know if all of you are really aware of what we're doing here. I'm just going to bring it up again. We're going to have a bathroom. The new bathroom is going to go where the selectmen are having their meetings. So we're going to take that room, that nice nice room, and it's going to be part of it. It's going to be a bathroom. So as long as long as you all know where that new bathroom is going to go. So that room is going to be chopped up. That's the beginning of it. So. Relevance to the motion. All those in favor of ending the meeting, say aye. 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 aye.